Okay, take a look at this thing here. This little thing is gonna be the most important part of your TIG welding setup. And the craziest thing is, so many people learn to use it wrong. I'm gonna help you out today if you are just getting going with learning to TIG weld. And I'm gonna teach you a few things that some professional welders probably don't know. Okay, this little buddy here, this is the TIG welding torch. In case you might not know, this will be the way that we can create the arc for our welding on different materials. There are different sizes and different types of torches. These can be used for different types of machines or welding requirements. And there are a ton of different ways that these can be set up. I'm gonna go into actual gear and consumables for the torch in this episode here. But one of the most important things that we can learn right off the bat here will honestly be one of the most common questions that I get sent from beginners. And believe it or not, the most common question that I typically get is how exactly is the best way to hold one of these things? So if you're just getting going or wondering the same thing, it's all good, I got you covered. So take a look right here at how I'm holding the torch. You can see that my hand is relatively comfortable. You can see that once I am set up here, I am able to manipulate it across the welding joint, no problem. The grip that I am using right here is the grip that I prefer. Now typically, without being aware, a lot of people actually get set up and start practicing with a grip like this. We can see that holding the torch like this forces somebody to essentially elevate their arm off the table a little more, but more importantly, it causes you to bend your wrist like this. This might not seem like a big deal, but it actually is something that can cause your hand or wrist to become quite uncomfortable, especially if you're doing practice sessions where you're TIG welding for a long amount of time each time you practice. Having your wrist or hand position like this is gonna cause you to get sore and fatigued. And most importantly, you're not gonna be very comfortable, so the stability of your hand is not gonna be that great. Holding the torch like this is much more natural for the posture of your wrist. And you can also see how my arm is positioned on the table edge here. Typically, a lot of people are gonna put the butt of their hand on the table like this here. When somebody positions their hand anchored to the table like this, it creates something or a term that I like to refer to as restrictive hand posture. Now, when you have your hand anchored like this, essentially what we can say is that we can reliably have only a couple inches of comfortable travel. You can see that as we start to travel outside of our comfort zone, we're gonna be reaching an area of discomfort pretty quickly in this position here. I've talked about this on my channel a lot before, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna position ourselves so that the middle of our forearm, somewhere around there, is making contact with the edge of the table instead. Now, before we had the pivot point being on the butt of our hand, but now we have it here, where before we only had about a couple inches of comfortable travel before we started to experience discomfort. Now, with our arm being positioned like this, we now have much more range of comfortable travel and we still will be positioned so that we can make contact with the table so your arm or hand will still be stable. Now, especially when you get going with TIG welding, I personally prefer this as something that's gonna give you much less stress, it's gonna give you more stability and be much easier to work with. Obviously, when you look at other professionals out there, there are a lot of people who use an overhand grip, especially when people specialize with something like walking the cup, overhand grip is pretty common. But remember, these are professionals who have already learned the basics up to this point. I absolutely recommend this as probably the best way to stay as comfortable as possible when you are first learning and make things a lot more stable for yourself. Now, the other thing that you can see by holding the torch like this way that I recommend here, what we can do is we can actually reduce the amount of weight that is pulling on the back of the torch. Again, going back to the original grip like this, you can see that the weight of the torch lead will be pulling on the back of the torch down towards the ground, of course. Positioning things like this here is actually gonna put the weight of the torch lead on the top of the hand instead. And this is gonna make the feeling of the weight of the torch lead about equal for either side of your hand. So basically this end of the torch here is gonna feel nice and light. Obviously we want the other end to feel just as light. Now I've talked about this next tip on my channel many times before, but to be honest, this is still something that I have to recommend and remind people about all the time. And this is going to be to make sure to loop the lead of your torch over something on the edge of your table. This can be a clamp of some kind like this here. It can be a hook or whatever, something that you attach to your table like this block on my strong hand table here. What this is gonna do is completely remove the weight of the torch hanging all the way to the floor. Now having your torch lead hang all the way to the floor like this right here, what this is gonna do is put a ton of pressure pulling on the back of the torch and the lines that go into it. Over time, this can actually cause the hoses in your torch lead to become frayed and start leaking, whether it's a water-cooled torch or an air-cooled torch. But again, basically what this is gonna do is actually just add weight to the back of the torch that you're gonna to have to deal with when manipulating it. Remember, up at the other end of the torch, we wanna be able to move and manipulate this end easily. Hanging the lead over a clamp or whatever on the edge of your table like this literally cuts the weight of it in half. 
Moving your torch along, practicing manipulation is going to be so much easier to learn as a beginner, as well as the components in your torch and the torch lead lines and stuff like that is going to be under way less stress. Okay, so now that we have all that stuff out of the way, let's work on some technique that we can go over with the torch. Now, in my online programs that I run on my website, whether we are working with stainless steel or aluminum, something I do in all of my exercises is essentially a warm-up that I call dry runs. Now, you can basically do this without even wearing a helmet or even having your TIG welding machine turned on. You can see that no matter what joint I am doing before I'm actually committing to using up the material by welding it, I'm basically just doing passes to practice the motion of traveling with it. Now, what we want to be aware of is the point that you are going to become uncomfortable, like we talked about. It's very important to know where this is. Working with smaller stuff like this, obviously you're probably going to be able to stay more comfortable because there is less distance to travel. But when you're working with something a little longer like this, we really have to take this into consideration. Now, especially when you're getting learning, like we talked about, we have to be aware of the points where we are going to start being uncomfortable. For example, getting set up to do a dry run like this here. You can see that your ideal distance for travel that is comfortable is about this long before you start to get uncomfortable. So what I recommend is that when you are assembling the joint, I recommend to put a tack here. What we're gonna do is now essentially make sure that we break all of our practice passes into passes about this long. And again, it does not matter if it's like an inch or two inches long, we just wanna make sure that the comfort as you travel is perfect from start all the way to the finish of however long you are ready to travel. As you start to build the overall comfort and familiarity with all of the exercises that you are practicing, you're gonna to start to get more comfortable and confident with the amount of travel that you are used to. And at this point, this is when you can start to increase the distance that you are traveling. What we wanna do is we wanna work on maintaining a perfect travel angle, essentially with your torch from start all the way to the finish. What is common is that essentially somebody is gonna start out with the perfect travel angle like this here. You can see that as they start to travel, things look pretty good, but by the end, the angle looks a bit different. We wanna avoid changing the angle from start to finish. When you are traveling, focus on remaining completely comfortable and maintaining perfect technique with your angle from start to finish. Like I mentioned, make it easy for yourself. Just stick with your comfort zone when you are first getting going. After you start getting really good and really comfortable and confident with this, this is now at the point where you can start to increase that distance. Okay, something that we can consider here is a little trick that I like to refer to as the twist. Now, look at this joint here. You can see I am doing a fillet joint in the 90 degree position or a horizontal position. Some people will notice that when they are practicing for this, it's really difficult to get a proper angle into the joint. The butt of the torch will perhaps bonk into the table this won't really let you get a proper angle into the joint like we want like this here. Now, some people when they are practicing, they prefer to elevate the joint on something like this here. That's totally cool. You can see that this essentially gives you a little bit more room to maneuver. Or you can try the trick that I'm going to teach you here right now called the twist. This may seem very simple, but this helps a lot of people out. Obviously, we want to keep the proper travel angle in the joint like this. But what we can do here is we can essentially twist the butt of the torch towards us a little bit. You can see that we are now creating much more room to manipulate the angle. But again, looking back to the important angle of the travel angle that we want here, this stays perfect. You might find that as you are practicing this, this almost pulls the weld along instead of pushing it. But again, going back to our angle here that we need to see, we can see that everything still looks good. Essentially, we are using the same push angle we would normally. This little trick here with all different joint configurations can be something that might actually help you out a lot. As you get into more advanced joint configurations, using the twist in all kinds of different scenarios is something that's gonna give you a lot more room to maneuver. Okay, now we are gonna get into a big subject here and this will be the consumables. Now, a lot of these consumables can depend on the type of torch that you are using. Some consumables are gonna work a little more favorably for something like stainless steel as opposed to aluminum TIG welding. But with whatever configuration of torch consumables or gear that you are using, the only thing that we really need to make sure of is that it is assembled correctly. That's right, whether you are using a gas lens or a diffuser type setup, just make sure that the outer collet body is secured in the torch properly. We wanna make sure that this is just a little more than finger tight. You don't have to do it up very tight at all. Now, after everything is assembled, usually it is typical that the assembly will actually loosen up over time. People typically don't have this assembly tightened up all the way in the torch head or something else isn't assembled correctly and the entire unit starts to come loose. You can see as I start to unscrew my torch here, the entire assembly is unscrewing with it. This is not a good thing. 
Now, remember what is happening in our welding torch is all of these consumables and all the different fittings are gonna be heating up and cooling down repeatedly, essentially expanding and contracting over and over, and this can cause these things to come loose if they are not assembled correctly. Now, when you're putting this together, you don't have to over tighten everything super tight with your pliers. Usually I just assemble everything with my hand and then I grab my welding pliers and just give it one extra squeak to make it a little bit tighter than I could do with my hand. If we do everything up too tight over time, like I said, things are gonna expand and contract as they heat up and cool down. And these things can start to warp over time and it can actually in some cases cause these threads to become fused and completely seized. At this point, you basically just welded all of your torch parts together and now this assembly is now garbage. Not the kind of welding we wanted to do today. So taking all this into consideration is gonna help you to get the best life out of the consumables in your torch for sure. Now the setup that we have been over as far as our torch setup and technique is gonna be designed to get you the best comfort while you're learning. I recommend watching this episode up next. This is gonna give you the best exercises to get started with when you are first learning to TIG weld. It's a complete breakdown with everything that you need to know when getting going with stainless steel. Do not miss that episode. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty James. Phil and chill. We will talk soon. Peace.